this next, next speaker, I think we met about five years ago. We both love making videos and flying our drones. And I think you're one of like the first managing brokers that let me come into your office and do a little presentation on video marketing. That was a lot of fun. Uh, if you don't know who he is, Steve Reyes, I've got nothing but incredible things to say about this guy. I mean, he's such a hustler. He's the managing broker of Megastar Realty. He is hitting the streets every week, finding deals. Every time we talk, some of the things you're doing, I'm like, wow, that is so creative. Uh, foreclosure, REOs, probate, and junior lien expert. Also, Megastar Realty named top small office in 2017 by PMAR. Come on up, Mr. Caesar Reyes. Yes. So I'm glad to hear you speak. Thank you. Thank you, Jared, for the introduction. How's everybody doing today? You guys excited to learn a little bit about wholesaling and uh, foreclosures and probate, and maybe we'll get a little bit into uh, junior lean positions. Just going to give you a little background of uh, my history in real estate. Uh, basically, I got my license and I was a first time home buyer specialist um, at Remax. And in 2001, I started getting calls from people they needed to sell their houses. And these people needed to sell their houses, but there was a problem. The problem was that they owned more than the house was worth. And so I had to learn how to do these short sales. And I had to set myself apart from some of the other agents. I talked to a title company, and they were telling me that most of the agents trying to process a short sale, they were closing only about 10, 15, maybe 20%. My close ratio was about 20%, I'm sorry, 80%. And the reason being is that I was doing something different. I was getting the whole short sale process from the beginning. I was getting my investors to make offers on my short sales before they even hit the market, and then I was getting them approved. So by the time I had my short sale on the MLS, I would put there on the broker remarks, hey, this short sale can close in 30 days. And that was really unseen at that time in the market. So I got a lot of experience working with the pre-foreclosure stage. A lot of clients would come in and they would even say, hey, Caesar, help me stay in my property for a year without making payments and then do the, the short sale. And that was my job. And I would help them do that because that's uh, something that I knew how to do. I knew how, to, how, how the banks work, the systems work. And so I was, became very experienced with the short sales. And I think ultimately that was something that helped me stay in the real estate business. I think that if it wasn't for these short sales, I'd probably not be in the real estate business right now. Then in about 2007, 2008, we all saw what was happening in the market. The market started dipping, we started having issues. And I got, a friend from my, I got a call from my friend, Nanita Rosita. Nanita Rosita was working at IAS, and they were an asset management company, and they were managing some of the assets for some of the banks when people were foreclosed, getting foreclosed on. So initially with the short sales, I had experience working with the pre-foreclosures before they would go to foreclosure, right? And now I was working with the banks after foreclosure. And to me, this was like, a gift sent from the heavens, you know, because apart from the typical transactions that I was doing, buyers, listings, uh, a couple investors here and there, I was getting REO listings from the bank. And I learned that I had to do different things when it was REO listings. I had to go ahead and get the uh, locks changed. I had to negotiate cash for keys with some of the occupants. It wasn't easy. And then we had to put some of the Excel bills under my, my company name, and I had to pay the bills, and then the company would later reimburse me. So this is how I kind of got started with short sales. So I learned the front end, and then I learned the back end of it after foreclosure. And this helped me out a lot. I was able to make nice income, and then starting like 2011, 2012, that business kind of went down. And so, again, I was working with buyers, working with sellers, and then ultimately, I landed a few investors that they started flipping houses. And we were finding these deals on the MLS. So what I started doing is, I would look at every property that would come on the market that looked like it was a flip. And even though my client wasn't gonna buy that house, I would print out these reports, and on every single one, I would get a value. 
a value of how much someone could sell it for, how much they would need to buy it at, so that they can make money so that I could present it to him. And even though maybe there was 10, 12 houses that I was doing on a daily basis, just doing the reports on, getting the analysis, I knew that he wasn't gonna buy all of them. He might not even buy any of them. But what I was doing is I was getting better, better at my numbers, better at judging you know, what properties are good, what properties are bad, which was a good deal. And these are all through the MLS. Then I find out that there's this whole like underground realtors, wholesalers, and it's called off-market properties. And I was like, what the heck is this? What is off-market properties? Because all I knew was properties on the MLS. How are all these other deals happening that don't even hit the market? There's properties being transacted off-market, and I wanted to learn about that. So eventually, I saw my flipper, he was making a lot of money, and I wanted to get into the flip game. And I said, hey, sign me up. I'm gonna go ahead and buy a house, and put 20% down, and I'm gonna flip it. Well, it turns out I got a wholesaler who sold me a property, and it was off-market, it wasn't on the MLS, and when I bought it, uh, I was super excited. The next day, I mean, I went to the house, had my shorts on, had my Air Maxes on, you know, taking down the bathroom, taking down the cabinets, super, super happy, super motivated. By the second, third week, you know, I had my contractor working on it, the, the plan was six weeks. Uh, but then I go back into the MLS just to kind of look to make sure that that property never goes on the MLS. And I saw that the realtor who had sold it to the wholesaler actually entered into the MLS and what it turns out is this wholesaler made 19,500 on that property. I'm like, wow, this guy only worked two, three hours on this deal, maybe four or five hours, right? And I'm here, busting butt here on Saturday and Sunday. I can't watch college football, I can't watch NFL on Sunday. And I'm here working, and then I'm going to Home Depot meeting. My contractor there, he goes back to the house, and I gotta go back to Home Depot four times on a Sunday. That is just a nightmare. I was so frustrated. So, you know, I bought this property like August 12th, and in my mind, it was gonna go on the market October, right? That's what we all say when we're working on fixing flips. And it didn't turn out like that. It definitely didn't turn out like that. Uh, this property lasted way too much time on, the, on the, getting fixed up. My contractor, like a lot of contractors, I'll get it done in six weeks, he go there once, or maybe twice a week, a couple hours, something's missing, take off, right? So eventually, you know, we, we got the project done, and when it was all said and done, I bought it in August 12th, I believe, and I ended up closing it beginning of February. I ended up losing $22,000 on that transaction, total. I had holding costs, uh, I went over budget, and I lost money. But what I really learned was there's another part of the business that I need to learn about, and that was the wholesale game. The wholesale game was completely different and something that I wasn't too familiar with. And I said, you know what? I need, next time I do a flip, I want to do it with my own capital. I want to do it with my own money. And I'm going to raise capital, I'm going to build capital by wholesaling. And that's what I'm going to do. Then I went to a training, a mastermind in Arizona with uh, Brett Tanner. And this really, really, really opened my eyes. Brett Tanner runs a huge team up in uh, Arizona and I believe a few other states. And he's, a, he's a KW agent. And I was expecting to learn more about you know, transactions, how to run your team. And this guy, he just kept talking about his wholesales. That's all he kept talking about. And then he had something that really caught my attention. He had his real estate hierarchy. His first thing was, can I buy it? The second was, can I control it? The third one was, can I wholesale it? And then the fourth one was, can I double end the property? And then the fifth one is, can I list it? And I'm an agent, I love listings, I do a lot of listings, and that really opened up my mind because here's a top producing agent that I looked up to, and the last thing on his mind was listing the property. And that just kind of goes against everything that you know, we've taught, we're taught in real estate is to list properties. And I, I love listing properties, but that really opened my mind that he was talking about more about, hey, why don't you buy this property? Why don't you control it? Once you control it, then you can do many different things with it, right? 
Then the other thing that he said is he had his multiple lanes of revenue. And when I was looking at his multiple lanes of revenue, he had on one lane working with buyers, which I don't really like working with buyers, it's a lot of time. Number two, listings. Number three, commercial real estate. Number four was like property management. Number five was like a transaction coordinator. All these lanes, then he had junior lean positions. He had wholesales, and then he started putting an X on every single lane that he was in. And he was on all these lanes. And then when someone asked him, Brett, what's your favorite one? He's like, by far, wholesale, by far complete. And that just blew my mind because I went there to learn how to run a team, how to do more transactions, and what I learned was, I gotta become a real estate investor. That's what's gonna take me to the next level, is becoming a real estate investor. So when I got back, I game plan, and I said, I'm not gonna fix and flip, because that was a complete mess for me. I'm gonna go out there and learn how to get these wholesale deals. So, with my foreclosure experience from my short sales and REOs, I went back to my basics, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna attack the foreclosure list. This is what I'm good at. I'm gonna do some of the dirty work, some of the work that a lot of people don't wanna do. Yes, I started door knocking. I started cold calling. I started texting. I would come back to the house two, three, four times. And my thing wasn't, hey, I wanna buy your house cash. My thing was, hey, homeowner, I know you're going through some struggles. Let me give you some of your options that you have so you can keep your property. That's what I'm here for. So the problem that I was doing before is I always came in just as a listing. I just want to list, I just want to list. And then when the homeowner would tell me, my house is too ugly, I can't put it on the market, I would go away. But now, when people would tell me, hey, I can't, my house is too ugly, this, this is a border house, um, it's got too many issues, can you please offer me cash? Then I would, I'm not gonna call somebody else. I was like, that's me. I'm gonna buy cash, I don't wanna buy it. And so that's what I started doing, is buying some of these properties, cash, and building up some capital. So what I would do is, I would buy them cash, and then I would have a buyer on the back end who wanted to buy this house. So I tested it out first. The first deal I did, I think uh, I bought for like 210, and then I, bought, I sold it to someone for like 222 or so, so we didn't make that much money. Another thing is, I didn't have all the money back then. And what I tell people is, partner up with somebody. Everybody in this room has or knows someone that has money, right? So who did I call? I called my dad. I was like, dad, help me out. You know, please, I need some money. He's like, what do you, what do you need it for? It's a real estate deal, trust me. So I go to the bank, I go to the credit union, and my dad is pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth. And he's like, I was like, Dad, all you gotta do is just wire the money. So it's gonna go to the title company, just wire the money. He's, what if I don't get my money back? What if they question me? What if, I was like, dude, just do it, Dad. I'm telling you, it's gonna work. So we did. Bought the house, I think like 210, sold there for like 222. It wasn't really that much money. But the next one, I ended up buying it at 150,000 in Coffin Heights. In the afternoon, I bought it in the morning, and in the afternoon, I sold it for $205,000. Like that. My dad's like, he helped me out again on this one. My dad's like, let's get a couple more. Let's get two or three going a month. And I'm like, yeah, that's... So, what I focused on was trying to learn how to do these deals, how to get these transactions. And I knew that this wasn't luxury real estate, you know, I knew that this was something like the work that a lot of agents didn't want to do, but I felt like, you know what, I had my experience in the past with the short sales and REOs. This is the way that I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and get these properties off market. Because there's a lot of wholesalers, there might be some wholesalers here, and I get deals thrown to me all the time. To me, it's important to get the deals directly. Because once you can get the deals directly, your margins are a lot bigger. Now, let's talk about numbers. People say, well, what, how do, you, how do you judge a property if it's a good deal? First and foremost, you have to know what the property is worth after being fixed up. So you have to do your ARV right. 
If your ARV is completely wrong, it's going to screw up your whole calculation. I like buying my houses anywhere from 55 to 60% of ARV, which will give me enough margin if I want to wholesale to somebody, make a quick 20, 30, 40, 50 grand, real quick, or I can hold on to the property, get my crew out there, and do what everybody else in this room is doing, and that's fixing and flipping. So once I was able to build up my capital and have cash to buy this property, because I didn't want to pay interest. I lost money on that fix and flip in 2018, so I said, when I'm ready to fix and flip again, I'm gonna make sure that I have the capital to buy these properties in cash, and that's what I did. Now I'm fixing and flipping a few properties, and I built a team at my company that they wanted to learn to do some of the same things that I had already known how to do. And I wanted to teach them because I knew that if I could duplicate myself and I could teach other people within my own brokerage how to find these deals, it was gonna make us all grow. And we could partner up on deals together. And that's exactly what happened. I taught them how to get these deals and eventually the deals started trickling in. We started getting more off markets, more wholesale deals. You know, some of them we could just put them on the market immediately. So that's pretty much how I got started with the wholesales uh, and the Q and A's. I'd be happy to answer some more questions about how to get some business and what list do I look at and all that. Thank you very much.